A journey and a story typically have a protagonist, and as much as I don't like being the center of attention, I am the main character in this story. So, we've arrived in Beijing, and tomorrow I report to Peking University, where I start my years of study abroad. Hi. I've arrived in a new world. Parallel journeys have started alongside mine. As in all stories, this is the setup, the beginning. We are people coming from various backgrounds with different goals. We're supposed to, uh, are we supposed to be like... No, you don't have to... Like super yeah. awesome? Are you supposed to be invisible? Uh, yeah, something invisible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That Justin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a journey in search of truth, for better or for worse. My name is KJ Lin. I'm a film student from Los Angeles looking for the next big thing. Following the signs, I fly off to East Asia. My travels will take me on a one-year journey into the heart of China, ending on the 2008 Beijing Olympics. What awaits me in China? Well, you'll have to wait and see. Truth. It's a word that all cultures understand, but to varying degree. The truth about China is that truth has consequences. By exposing truth, you can make a person, or even an entire government, experience the concept of losing face. An Asian-centric term that deals with the loss of reputation and connections to those around you. If you make someone lose face, you can expect the wrath of hell from the hurt individual or group but sometimes causing a drastic change or loss of face is just what someone needs to move forward. Like a revolution of sorts. The idea of face isn't a communist idea that you might expect, but a centuries-long tradition of keeping relationships intact and a relationship between do and don't do. If anything, the truth about China would be its people though fragmented by an immense and regionalized population. The people are intensely connected by localized bonds of friends, family, and city, driven towards a direction of progress. Losing face in the most indirect sense can every so often push China towards a new future. Losing face has been the perpetual force behind modern China in a nutshell. Student and farmer revolutions, the passive aggressive nature of its people, foreign invasion, change in policy and ideals, China's journey into the new century, modernization, and everything else that's dynamic as hell. Beijing is the center of it all, a place where the most educated, most political, most passionate, most ambitious, most revolutionary, most cultured, and most important come to build face. That, the sign says lounge, but there's not a chair in sight. This is lounge for foreign guests. What does that mean? What does that mean? A lounge for foreign guests equals souvenir shop. I don't get it. A money trap, right? We're like a little puzzle right now. Go in and check it out. I think it's Now, as much as I can make this episode a deep and moving journey, it isn't. That's the truth. A first week of orientation full of touristy locations just wasn't my thing. Manufactured to us in a commercial form, the controlled reality of China. I have higher hopes. Welcome to China. <laughs> Well, tell me, what do you know about this place? <laughs> Not much. Not much. <laughs> what do you know about this place? I'm learning as I go. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. That's cool. You know why I go to learn about this stuff? Because it's historical, yeah. rather than a lot of the high rises. Yeah. And we get to see the real China. 
That's true. Wikipedia helps. <laughs> <laughs> Beijing City, a symmetrical city with the center being its governing body, surrounded by five large ring roads, the first ring non-existent and a sixth being projected. The main city is divided by eight main districts, Dongcheng, Xicheng, Chongwen, Xuanwu, Chaoyang, Haidian, Fengtai, and Shijingshan. We'll concern ourselves with the Haidian district for now. This is essentially China's top school, Peking University, or as the locals call it, Beida. If there are schools in the United States that could compare, it would be the combination of prestigious and historic Harvard with the liberal and revolutionary prowess of UC Berkeley. Many of China's pivotal and tragic revolutions start from this university. In addition, many of the leaders of China have come from this school or the neighboring school, Tsinghua University, the MIT of China. This high expectation from such a highly acclaimed school that ranks in the top 10 of all universities in the world led me here. However, the reality might be a bit different. A little bit of humble is definitely needed. The confusion about how to register for classes in a different education system didn't help. Teachers or advisors here sometimes would give you an answer to a question despite not knowing the true answer in an attempt not to lose face. This caused a lot of intercultural shock and confusion, especially among the most Western of Westerners. Cultural relativity was a must in this highly nuanced society. After a placement test that pretty much destroyed even some of the more advanced Chinese students, classes began. We realized the laughable word intensive in our program's guide description was really intensive, hardcore. <coughs> this is where I live, shower room number nine, a dorm hotel at an astronomical $600 per month. For the same price, you can get some of the best apartments in Beijing with a skyline view. Average rent in Beijing runs about 200 US per month. Food in Beijing is ridiculously cheap for the most part. A full meal can cost you two RMB, that's close to 25 cents US. Of course, if you're in for some world-class cuisine, you can expect to pay tens to hundreds of dollars. However, with sheer amount of choice, even some of the top restaurants won't cost you more than a dinner at a lackluster Denny's in the US. Welcome to China, folks. 